Let's give a clap of offering to the Lord. We always deserve all glory and honor. Even as we, before we sit down, let's just pray for, for the word. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to glorify you. Lord, you had prayers in Isaiah 41 verse 10 that before you, there was no other God. Even now, there is no other. And apart from you, there is no other Savior. And King of Glory, this morning as a congregation, we want to confess and declare that behold, you are our salvation. We shall trust and not be afraid. For you, Jehovah, you are our strength and our song. Lord, you have become our salvation. And Heavenly Father, Lord, as we sit under your feet this, this afternoon, King of Glory, how, Lord, we raise ourselves to you. Lord, we come with expectation, praying that Holy Spirit of God will be our teacher. And King of Glory, may your word, which you reckon to the fire that refines, and even to a hammer that breaks lock into pieces, Lord, may it minister to our hearts and to our spirits, that we will here saying that indeed the Lord has ministered to us. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's uh, thank you, praise and worship team. Let's give them a hand. They have uh, uh, thank God for what God has continued to do, even through you. And we are beneficiaries of your ministry. God richly bless you. My name is uh, Stephen Jeroge Solomon, and Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. And uh, I take this opportunity to give God all the glory, even for this opportunity to share the word of God. And also want to thank our parent, our bishop, and our mom, Pastor Harris, also for, uh, for allowing us to use this pulpit and the pastoral team. I do not take it for granted. And uh, I thank God, even because of each one of you, that you found, uh, you found it fit to be found in the house of the Lord. David says that it's better to be found in, uh, in the house of the Lord than in a thousand other places. So know that you are blessed to be found in the house of the Lord, to be found in his manifest presence. So I'm married uh, to, uh, to one pastor, uh, Susan Jeroge, but today she's not with us. She's taking care of my mother. Uh, and we have been blessed with four boys. So uh, Elvis came to the second service, but the others are away in school. So uh, today, uh, I'd like to share the word of God, and the topic is, when it looks like nothing, it's happening. When it looks like nothing is happening. And maybe you have been praying, trusting God for that need, for that situation, even for that person, for a long time, and it looks like nothing is happening. But I want you to mark this. It looks like it, the, the key word is, it looks like nothing, it looks like. So that is the key word, it looks like. So God is always at work in our lives. But sometimes it may look as if nothing is happening. But I thank God that uh, uh, he's always at work in, in our lives. He remains Jehovah El Shaddai, God Almighty. Uh, God, God Almighty, God of more than enough. And the word of God in Ecclesiastes uh, 311 in the amplified version uh, the word of God says that he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time he has also planted eternity that is a sense of divine purpose in the human heart a mysterious wronging which nothing under the sun can satisfy uh, except God the last bit is key yet man cannot, uh, cannot comprehend grabs what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. And this scripture is reminding us that we cannot see into the future. We cannot, uh, we, we cannot, we cannot see in, in, into the future or comprehend everything because we are, we, we are limited. But what we can do is that we can trust God because he's always in full control. He, there are no times that God is, uh, is, is never in control. But he's always in control. Let's always remember that we are people of, uh, with limitations. But we can count on God because he's not limited in any way. And in the second service, Bishop was, uh, was preaching to us about honoring our father. And he was talking about our heavenly father. Who is perfect in all his ways and is not limited in any way. So let's continue to put, uh, to put our hope and trust in the Lord. And I thank God that as Deliverance Church International Family... We have the word of God this year. He has continued, God has continued to be faithful to give us a word that we can run with 
every season. And in this year, we have the season for mounting up. And uh, maybe the current situation that we are having currently, you may be asking, yes, we are mounting up. But when you look at your situation, maybe it looks a bit desperate. It's, it's portraying a different story. But my friends, the, the, law, the word of God is able to carry us through in this season. So it's important to know that we have the word of God, which is uh, forever settled in heaven. And, uh, and as we continue waiting upon the Lord, let's continue to wait uh, on him confidently, knowing that he fareth not. Let's continue waiting uh, on him expectantly, because we know that he will surely come at his appointed time. Let's continue waiting on him quietly, knowing that, uh, 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 depending wholly on him. That is letting God and letting go. And let's continue waiting patiently on him because he's a faithful God. Great is his faithfulness. And uh, uh, the scripture in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to prophet, uh, to prophet Elijah and uh, uh, to go to present himself to King Ahab and God will send rain. So God is the one who said that he's going to send rain. But I would like we pick something how Prophet Elijah responded to the word of God. See, the word of the Lord came, uh, uh, the, came to Elijah, the prophet, in the third year, saying, go present yourself to Ahab, and I'll send rain on the earth. And um, what we see is that Prophet Elijah honored the word. So he gave weight. He ascribed value to that word of God. And uh, we, we can be able to see that uh, in in the same, uh, in, from verse 41 to verse 45, let's see verse uh, 41 to 45, uh, in first, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance rain. So Ahab went to, uh, to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down uh, on the ground and put his face between the, his knees. And said to uh, his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a crowd as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Verse 45. Now it happened in the meantime, that the sky became black with the clouds and weed, and there was a heavy rain, so Ahab rode away and went to Je uh, Jezel. So what we see here is that the prophet of God honored the word of, uh, the word of God. Even when he was told that there is nothing, he had confidence with the word of God because he had put value in that word of God. Even as we have been told that it's our season for mounting up, but it, it, uh, there is condition that we, uh, we, only when we wait upon him. Because when we wait upon him, he's going to renew our strength and we are going to mount up uh, with wings as, uh, as with wiggles. And uh, with our topic that when it looks as if nothing is happening. And when I was sitting, I was just looking back and uh, conf uh, confessing the faithfulness of God. In our family, we, we have a big family. And we have a, a family ranch uh, which was supposed to cater for seven families. But it, uh, somehow, uh, through deceit, one of the family members took a loan back in 1983. And this loan was for 500,000. And later, in the year, uh, later in, the year uh, in the year 1987, he took another 740. And then in the following year, uh, in the following year of 1988, he took another loan of 1 million. Nobody else in the family knew. Because the title was, had uh, his name and with somebody else. So what surprised us is that we saw the news uh, in the newspaper, uh, our land being auctioned. And I remember it was a very terrifying uh, time because uh, the auctioneers had given the date when they were coming. So we are quaking with fear, not knowing what is going to, to happen. But I remember my mother and my, my other, uh, our, our parents telling us to continue trusting in the Lord that God is going to come through. Yes, there was fear, but we are trusting upon the Lord. And uh, several, it followed several other times that uh, a time could come because when we tried to negotiate with the bank, they were, they were not giving uh, uh, way until one time. 
we tried to talk to them to allow what was called partial discharge. They allow us to sell part of the land, and then the, the rest of the land uh, will, will remain with us because uh, that's all the, where the, the seven families were, were depending. The bank could not agree. So severally, I remember we could be asked to pay money, not for paying off the loan, but so that we could get injunction and also pay for the advert. So it went severally, and that uh, took for almost more than 20 years. And interest moved from 16% to about uh, that 6%. And I remember in, uh, in, in January 1999, that loan had gone to 38.2 million. And in the, following, uh, in the same year in June, it was 43.63. And I remember a time came, it was 66 million. And after that, everyone, even, even our parents, did not even want to diverge the, uh, 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 the, the, the amount of the loan. But we continued trusting in the Lord. But somehow, the court ruled in our favor. And uh, the amount was drastically reduced, uh, reduced to about 18 million. And somebody was available to bail us out. So we paid the bank, but that person took a bit, uh, almost half of the rent, and then the rest of the rent was, uh, remained with us. And as I, as I stand today, I'm an administrator of the rent that was, uh, was saved. And by the grace of God, we have the deed plans, and we have the certificate of subdivision. So I know it's just a matter of time that all the seven families will be having titles in their own name. So I give God all the, all the glory. Yes, it looked as if nothing was happening. But God remained full in control because great is his faithfulness. And he remains because greater is the power with us. For the Lord is with us to help us and to fight our battles. Praise the name of the Lord. So we can also run from the children of Israel who are enslaved in Egypt for a very long time and underwent a lot of pain and it looked like God had forgotten them or was not concerned about them. But in fact, we know that God had a game plan for them and God had not forgotten them because God had in mind in them, he protected and prepared Moses for his assignment. That's why in Exodus 3 verse 10, the word of God, uh, uh, God told Moses, come now therefore, I'll send you to Pharaoh and you, you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God had them in mind. And uh, when you look at the word of God in uh, Genesis uh, 15 verse 13 and 14, Genesis 15 verse 13 and 14, God was speaking to Moses, uh, not to Abraham, and he said, then he said to Abraham, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land uh, that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four years, uh, 400 years. And uh, also the nation whom they serve, are judge afterward, they shall come out with, uh, out, uh, with great possessions. And then uh, we can see in Genesis 50 verse 14, uh, this was Joseph who said, and after he, ha he had uh, buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt. He and his brothers and all went up with him to bury his father. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, 24, 24, sorry. So 24, uh, that was a type of error. So it says, and Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying, but God will surely visit you. Yeah, Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land. God will surely, uh, God will surely, uh, let's go back there. Uh, uh, I'm dying, but God will surely, so you see there is an assurance, surely visit you and bring you out of his land to the land of, of which he sold to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So there was that promise, and you and me know that it finally came to, to pass that God delivered he, them with his out, outstretched hand. So the question that I'm, I, I would like to pose to you and I pose to myself, how do you respond when it looks like nothing is happening? How do you respond when it looks uh, like nothing is happening? Do you give up in despair and ruin on your own understanding? Or do you wait patiently upon the Lord? So that is a question that only you, you can answer. But let's also see another, uh, another, uh, another scenario, and this was King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 6 to 14. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 6 uh, uh, to 14. When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard-pressed, they hid 
in caves and thickets, among the rocks and in, in, in pits and uh, cisterns. Some Hebrews were even crossed uh, the Jordan to the land of Gad and uh, Gerard. Saul remained in Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. They were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered, them up, uh, up the burnt, offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making uh, the offering, Saul, uh, Samuel arrived and Saul went to greet him. When he, uh, you, what have you done? Asked Samuel. So Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at that, the set time and that the Philistines were assembling uh, at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. Let's continue. I, uh, 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 you have done a foolish thing. Samuel said, you have not kept the command of, of the Lord your God, the, the, your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will, will not endure. The, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. So I'd like uh, us to also to consider that uh, when a seed is planted by the farmer, it looks like nothing is happening. And I know from where we come, we come from, yes, we know that our mothers go and plant, or maybe you come some, somewhere where, where planting is ha happens. So when planting has been done, when the seed has been planted, it looks like nothing is going on for some time until that plant breaks forth and, and ultimately brings out some wonderful fruits. Also, when a new life has begun in a woman's womb, it doesn't look like anything has happened for quite some time. But every day, that life is, is growing where, where we can't see it grow. Until it first reshapes that mother's body and ultimately appears as that precious little baby being born. I know we can all identify with that scenario. The problem is that when it looks like nothing is, is happening, we tend to say, well then, I have got to do something. And I know you and me, many times we have given up and we have th thought of doing something. <clears throat> and most often it is the wrong thing, like digging up the seed to see if it's growing or plowing up the garden because it looks like nothing is happening. But you and me know that th something was actually happening. In 1 Samuel uh, uh, first 13, what we saw in verse 6, uh, our word for today, today is that we have got a sobering example of how much we lose when we fail to wait upon the Lord to do it his way. Waiting upon the Lord to do it his way. Praise the Lord. Not just waiting upon the Lord, but uh, waiting upon the Lord so that he's able to do it his way. So Saul, uh, Israel's first king had been told uh, by the man of God, Samuel, uh, that is in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 8. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 8. He had been told, go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely, see uh, the, the word of assurance, I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. But you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are about to do. So an assurance had been given. And, uh, and King Saul knew that this was the man of God. And you know, God is faithful to his word. And the word of God usually says in Isaiah 44 verse 26, uh, I like it in the end of the version, it says that, that our God carries out the words of his servants and fulfills the predictions of his messenger. That is Isaiah 40, 44 verse 26. That he carries out the words of his servants and fulfills the predictions of his messengers. So, he knew that an, an assurance had been given. With the Philistine uh, forces massing uh, against them, in the Bible, uh, from verse 7 uh, to 8, uh, in that first Samuel chapter 13, so remained at Gilgal, and all the troops were, uh, were with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by uh, Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal. Saul's men began to scatter. So Saul panicked and did not, uh, he, did not, he did what a king was not allowed to do. He offered the burnt offering himself and crossed the sacred line. So he crossed the sacred line. 
And just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived. When Samuel asked, what have you done? Saul answers by talking about, I saw, I thought, I felt. Just like it happens to us. So Samuel says, you acted foolishly. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God. Now your kingdom will not endure. So it was a costly mistake. Saul forfeited the major legacy of his life because of disobedience that, and that disqualified him. A disobedient came because he couldn't wait for God to do it, to do it his way. Not just waiting about, uh, upon the Lord, but waiting for God to do it his way. You and I are so prone to making that same kind of mistake. When it looks like uh, nothing is happening, things are starting to fall uh, apart, and it looks like we are on the point of no return. We take matters into our own hand, and in so doing, we, uh, we, we, we reign what was, uh, what, or we destroy what was supposed to, to happen. You know, our father of faith, Abraham, despite getting assurance from the Lord that a son who, who was in his own flesh and blood was to be his heir, that is according to Genesis 15, verse 4, uh, 4 and, uh, and 15, he had been assured that they are going to get, to get a, a, a child. Later you see uh, uh, him uh, uh, conspiring with, with Sarah in Genesis 16, verse 1 to 4, to sleep with that Egyptian servant, uh, servant, that is Hagar, and they were able to get a, a child. But God again, even uh, after they had done that mistake, in Genesis 17, from verse 15 to 16, God came again and reassured them. He reassured them and told them that it will be, uh, yes, let's, uh, let's read that, that is Genesis 17. Even after they had that, made that mistake, the word of God says that, then God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. So we, saw, we see that God came through for, uh, uh, for them. And today, Bishop was reminding us that our father is long-suffering and full of compassion. Yes, there are many times that we do brand us, so we do mistakes, very costly mistakes. But God is gracious, just as he was gracious to Abraham. Because he's not a man like you who grow impatient, but our God is long-suffering and full of compassion. God's timing is the best. He shares glory with no one. So that's what we need to know, that God never shares glory with anyone. And uh, so he waits until the moment when everyone will know it had to be him. He waits uh, uh, for our faith to stretch further than it ever stretched before uh, uh, he, so that he can be able to do greater things for us even as he had done before because we know that there are many things you can do but without faith it's impossible to praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why we are reminded by the psalmist in Psalms 35 verse 5 and 7a says that commit your ways to the Lord Trust in him also, uh, trust in him also, and he will do it. Verse 7a, 7a, be still before the Lord, wait patiently for him, and trust yourself to him. So be still before the Lord, wait patiently for him, and trust uh, yourself to him. So it's important that you continue waiting on the Lord patiently, because we know that our God is forever faithful. Friends, our strength will come from settling down in complete, in complete dependence on our God. And in, in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 30 verse 15, the message version, Isaiah 30 verse 15, uh, it says, God, the master, the holy of Israel, has this solemn counsel. Your salvation requires you to turn back to me and stop your silly efforts to save yourself. Your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on God, the very thing you have been unwilling to do. So, friends, let's depend on our God. Yes, he saved us. Yes, we are walking with faith. But let's pray that he's going to give us the staying power, that we continue trusting him. Because those that look unto him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. So he's a faithful God. And uh, I'm concluding, let's uh, look at what, what we need to do when it looks like nothing is happening. There are just four points. What we need to do when it looks like nothing is happening. We saw that Elijah 
honored the word of God. And it came to pass. We saw Saul doubted, uh, did not do even as he has been commanded. But later, uh, and, and he, he did lose his kingdom. Later we see Abraham, he made a very deadly mistake, but God was gracious enough. And we saw that what God had promised came to pass. So, uh, but we write a, a lot uh, from, from Samuel and we are going to see. So what we need to do when it looks like nothing is happening. I don't know what situation you have been waiting God for. I don't know what that needs, that situation or that person that you have been trusting God to do something concerning that, uh, passing, uh, that situation or that person. But we know that our God is not limited in any way. He's exalted in power. His understanding has no limit. So the first point is that continue honoring God, God's, uh, God, continue honoring God by walking in the path of obedience. The first point is continue honoring God by walking in the path of obedience. And uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 to 23, here uh, Saul again was later told, uh, told by God to ensure that he did, uh, destroys all the Amalekites. And because God had vowed uh, in, uh, in, Exodus 15, uh, in, in Exodus, I think, 17, that he's going to remove them from the, uh, from the world. But he did not obey. So here, but Samuel replied after he, he, he failed in his mission. So the word of God says, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat rams. Verse 23. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of uh, idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Friends, Yes, we have the word of the Lord, that it's the year of mounting up. Let's honor that word. Let's give that word weight. Even as when we pass through, we pass through trying times, that we know that we can count on that, uh, on that word, because God will bring it to pass for his glory. We need to know and observe the boundaries that God has laid by his word. For us to know the boundaries that we should not, uh, uh, we should not, we should not bypass, is, uh, our guide is in the word of the Lord. So let's observe those boundaries. People cross God's boundary lines due to either ignorance, and that's why the word of God in Hosea 4 verse 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If, or if it's not ignorance, it's the issue of choice. So it's not enough to know the word of God. Yes, we may know, yes, we have Isaiah 40 verse that one. So it's not enough only to know it, but we have to obey and to read that word. And in the text that we saw, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse, uh, verse 13, so he was told that you have done a foolish thing. Samuel said, you have, you have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all the time. So Saul failed to keep his reign. I remember Pastor Zachary uh, preaching to us about keeping your reign. Uh, he failed to keep his reign. He did what was, no king was allowed to, to do by God. He offered the burnt offering himself and he crossed the sacred rain. In this year of mounting up, let's continue waiting upon the Lord, and our strength will be renewed so that we can mount up uh, as egos. So we have seen the first point, continue honoring God by walking in the path of obedience. And in the scripture, you can see Israelites, in Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 4, they were told about that path of obedience, the blessing that was to follow them. And curses come from verse 15 to verse 60, 68. There are a lot of verses for those who, obey, uh, who disobeyed. But let's walk in the path of obedience to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. Uh, the second point, keep reminding ourselves, keep reminding ourselves that God honors faith and it's impossible to please him without faith. So keep reminding ourselves that God honors faith and it's impossible to please him without faith. We know about the woman with the issue of blood uh, uh, in, in Mark chapter 5. So we, uh, and we see from verse 27 to 28, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And in verse 34, the scripture says that, and he, and, and, and he said to her, that is Jesus, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So, friends, let's know that God honors our faith. 
There is no in the scripture where God says that he honors our tears. But one thing he honors, he honors our faith. And in many instances, he told people that, go, your faith, your faith has made you well. Your faith has healed you. So he honors faith. And without faith, it's impossible to praise him. So let's choose that we are going to be men and women uh, of faith. Let's never forget that God's faithfulness never fa fails. His promises are yes and amen. And, and, and the, uh, so his word will only work in our lives if we receive it gladly and not waver in our faith. In Hebrews 10, uh, 10 verse 23, Hebrews 10 uh, verse 23, uh, the word of God reminds us that let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. That is our God. And in James 1, Verse 6 uh, to 7, James chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. But when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. So our faith should be in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided royalty is as unsettled uh, as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So friends... Let's put our faith in God and in God alone. Praise the Lord. Man will fail you, but God can never fail you. So uh, he honors, he sees faith and he honors faith. So the third point is that trust uh, what we need to do even uh, when things seem not to be, to be working. Trust his unchanging character. Trust his unchanging character. Uh, the scripture in Marach chapter 3 verse 6, uh, God told the Israelites that, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. So, friends, our God changes not. No wonder when God was speaking to the Israelites in Isaiah 43 verse 10, he reminded them that before me, there was no other God. Even now, there is no other. And apart from me, there is no other Savior. And he was reminding them, it's not, it's me and not some foreign gods among you that has brought you this far. So even us, where we have come from, we have come from a very difficult year uh, of 2020. But God was with us. He preserved us. He protected. He, provide, uh, he, he provided for us. He blessed us with his peace. That today we can stand here as remnants. We are not survivors. Hmm? Survivors ni watuwale wanajipatanga tu wameangukia. But sisi tulipitia mambo mangumu. Hmm? Lakini tukatoka na ushindi kwa sababu Bwana alikuwa pamoja nasi. We are not survivors but we are remnants. Tuwe matigali. We are remnants. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, so you are not a survivor but you are looking at a remnant who is uh, who, who is on the left or, the, or on the side of you. And Jesus in Hebrews 13 verse uh, the word uh, says, says of Jesus in Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And our God remains the great I am. Not the great I will, uh, not, not the great I was or the great I will. He remains the great I am. And uh, what I love about our God is that even when he was introducing himself to Moses, he told, he told Moses, I'm God uh, of your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he needed to know uh, his name. And he, he you, you know, it's, it depends on what, other, it doesn't matter what other people call you, but you know what, how you are called. Like me, I, I know I'm called Stephen Joroge Solomon. So other people, I know I'm Solomon, Stephen, so I but God himself, he introduced himself as I am who I am. And it's like he was giving the Israelites a brand check. It's like he was telling them, I'll be who you desire me to be to you. Where you require hearing, I'll be your hearer. Where you require deliverance, I'll be your deliverer. And I usually see the faithfulness of God because although Abraham, although, although Moses later, uh, we see in Deuteronomy that too, he was taken up in the mountain and he was told, that is the land that you and your brother, uh, uh, you, you will not be able to see because you will not treat me holy in the presence of your people. But he told me, this is where I'm going to take my people because uh, of my friend Abraham. But later in Deuteronomy 33, after he completed uh, blessing the, tribe, the 12 tribes of Israel, he usually makes a very profound statement in Deuteronomy 33 verse 26. This is someone who knew that he's going to die, but he talked about his, uh, 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 God and he said that there is none like the God of Jeshuran, that is the chosen one, the Israel, who rides on the heavens to help you and on the crowds in his majesty. 
eternal God is your refuge underneath are his everlasting arms. So Moses, I see Moses was giving a testimony of the faithfulness of our God because he has seen God, uh, he knew that God was faithful. God, uh, God changes not. He's always in full control. So that, let's not remit him because he's a, he's, a, he's a God and there is none like you. And if you have nothing even to, uh, 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 to thank God for or to, or to remember God for, remember that his masses are new each and every morning. His love endures forever and his faithfulness feareth not. And when it comes to his grace, it's always sufficient and amazing. Praise the name of the Lord. And the fourth point, keep in mind that our times and seasons are in his hand. Keep in mind that our times and seasons are in his hands. Uh, the scripture in uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 2, it says that for everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. Verse 2. Uh, 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 verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest. Let's let hold it there. So today we are, we, are, we are talking about when it looks like nothing is happening. But we know that, yes, there is a time to plant and there is time to, uh, to harvest. But there is a time that you don't know what is happening. But we know that even when it looks like nothing is happening, we know that something is happening. That's why at the end of it, that we have a fruit that we can be able to get. Praise the name of the Lord. The seasons of life require that we sometimes enter a period of, dom uh, of dormancy. A period of dormancy. We are not dead, but we may feel uh, we have become invisible or are mark timing. So there are times that you feel uh, as if you are invisible or you are mark timing. Ata ukiwa kwa umati ya watu kwa sabi ya hara mamba unapitia, unawana ni kama uonekani. Eh? Unafikiri, eh, akuna mtu anakuwa nao mungu wa mekusahau. So, <clears throat> but periods like this, that is period of dormancy, are for our protection and preparation. For our protection and preparation. Moses experienced a period like this. After killing an Egyptian who had harmed a, a fellow Hebrew, Moses had to flee for his life in, in, in the, to the distant land of the Midianites. There God protected him and prepared him for his biggest assignment, to go and deliver, the, uh, uh, the, the, to bring out the children of Israel. Friends, be encouraged. We are never invisible to God. Friends, we are never invisible to God. Although Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the, uh, of the Egyptians, he did not forget that he was a Hebrew. In those critical formative years as a child, Moses was raised by a Jew, by Jochebed, his mother. So it, God had a divinely planned that Moses was to be brought up by uh, a, 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 Jew, a, a Jew so that he could be taught the tradition and he could know their God. So yes, he knew the life of the Paris, but because of his formative, uh, God had a plan that's why the mother was the one who was used to nurse that baby. David knew his times and season were in the hands of the Lord. And that's why in Psalms 1 verse 15, David said that my times are in your hands. Uh, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemy and from those who persecute me. And Psalms that one is a very unique psalm because that was the, the time that David was being pursued by his enemies. His neighbors had forsaken him. His friends had forsaken him. But he reached here in verse 15 and he said that my times are in your hands. Friends, even in this season, may you, uh, may you desire that your time, and may you always remember that your times are in the hands of the Lord. And uh, the final scripture, that is Daniel chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. After the dream was uh, revealed to, uh, to, uh, to David, then uh, the scripture says, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a, in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Uh, the, the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Wisdom and might are his. He changes times and seasons. He changes what? Times and seasons. So friends, even as we continue waiting on, upon the Lord, let's keep uh, in mind that our times and his, our seasons are in the hands of the Lord. As I conclude, there are those four points. And the first one, we say that let's honor God by walking in the path of obedience. Uh, we say, uh, let's remember that, uh, always remind ourselves that God honors faith and that it's impossible to please God. 
And number three, we have said that let's continue trusting his unchanging character. We are not consumed because he changes not. And he will not change because he's from everlasting to, ever, from everlasting, to everlasting. And number four, keep in mind that our seasons and our times are in the hands of the Lord. As I conclude, friends, God is always at work in our lives. Even when we cannot see it, nothing or no one can thwart what God has purpose in our lives or in our situation. No one is invisible to God. You may be invisible to people, but you are never invisible to God. God cares specifically about us, each one of us. And that's why the psalmist in Psalms uh, uh, 139, uh, verse 1 to 4, uh, quickly, uh, he says that, for the, uh, uh, okay, uh, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Verse 2. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down, and you are familiar with my ways. Number four. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. And then number 14 to 18 of the same. I, I, I will praise you uh, because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Number 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was, I, I was made in the sacred place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. In, uh, in your eyes, uh, saw my, uh, you saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to pass. Uh, we can stop it from there. So it says that God knows what is going to say, what we are going to say, or what we are thinking. We cannot escape his presence, and he planned all our other existence before we were born. We do not need to feel unimportant when God of the universe is all that interested in you. So we can see from that Psalm 139 that God is so interested in us that he is involved in every detail of our lives and he thinks good thoughts about us. So friends, don't compare yourself. Or let's not compare ourselves with others or run the race of others. Run your race. Don't compare yourself with others. So, um, so that's the word of the Lord. Uh, and uh, today, yes, you are there and you have been listening. And maybe you do not know Jesus as Lord of your life. He may be just your God, but how I desire that you may know him as your Lord and your Savior. And when you, you accept him in faith, he's going to come into you and he's going to change you. And if maybe you are in the sanctuary or maybe you are watching us, you can repeat this prayer after me. And say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I, I, I confess of all my sins. I repent of each one of them. Wash me, cleanse me, and sanctify me with the blood of Jesus. From today on, I'm born again. Holy Spirit of God, take charge of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. If you have prayed that prayer, you can see the usher. Or you can, you can, uh, that number uh, which is on the screen, you can write there and you will be assisted. Because foundations are very key so that you are well grounded, so that you can be able to stand. So let's all stand uh, even as we, uh, we make the concluding prayer. So let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to glorify you, Lord, for your word, which is, Lord, uh, living, which is powerful, refreshing. And thank you, Jehovah God, because it has refreshed us, King of glory. And Lord, as we begin a new King of glory, Help us always to remember that, Lord, you are always, Lord, at work, even when, Lord, we, it seems as if nothing is happening. That, Lord, you never, uh, you, you, you are always in control, King of glory. You never fail as King of glory. How I pray that for each one of us, King of glory, that, Lord, you give us the staying power, King of glory. That, Lord, we can continue to make you our hope and our confidence, King of glory. That you may be like that tree planted on the, uh, by the riverside, with its root deep in the waters, which never dries up even when there is fear drought, but you cause it to bear fruits even in its season. Be glorified and be exalted because King of glory you are called and there is none like you. And Lord, even for your people, King of glory, yes, they came, Lord, with diverse expectation, King of glory. May you meet them at their point of need. Above all, Lord, may you surprise them, Lord, even as you exceed their expectation to the honor and to the praise of your holy name. Lord, I declare, Lord, their week is blessed, King of glory, because you go before them. Lord, you'll be their rear guard and Lord, you give them victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.